Reporting the gamer news every day is, well, it's constantly surprising. Today, for example, we found out that you lot don't actually want full finished products when you buy a game. It's true. Uh, apparently you guys love season passes and DLC and you just want your games to cost a lot more money. Who knew? <laughs> So, are you surprised and confused by that intro? Well, let me explain. A recent study from Digital River, which is described as a monetization service company, one of, one of those things, found that the recent trend towards games as a service has actually tripled the value of the games industry. The study, titled Defend Your Kingdom, colon, What Game Publishers Need to Know About Monetization and Fraud, says that game devs are benefiting from the steady stream of in-game content that both serves player expectations and increases their revenue per user. The report says that this doesn't just apply to free-to-play games and in 2016 a quarter of all revenue from non-free-to-play PC games came from additional content. And here comes the interesting part. The study says, quote, consumers are less willing to pay $60 for a box game and instead choose titles with a steady stream of new content. And according to Digital River, the games as a service model, as in regular updates, add-ons, season passes and DLC, means that the money made per game is expected to grow twice as fast as the rest of the market. The study also said that on average, PC players wait around three weeks after they decide they want a game before buying it in hopes the game goes on sale to save a little bit of money. Not only that, but that gamers are gaming this game's market, and that's not good for publishers at all. In other words, they're saying that you exercising your consumer right by waiting for a cheaper price is gaming the industry. Creating a constantly evolving and updated game on the other hand means that developers and publishers can sell the game for full price long after the game's release date and hey, sell you some bits of DLC or microtransactions while they're at it. And by tying the new game directly to a publisher account like EA Origin or Uplay, players can't just finish the game and sell it on like they can with physical copies. So then, if you've been wondering why recent games like Star Wars Battlefront 2, Forza Motorsport 7, NBA 2K18, Assassin's Creed Origins, Shadow of War and the list goes on, if you've been wondering why all of those games have got big plans to sell you extra content before, during and long after release, it's probably got something to do with studies like this one and what they seem to show. Assassin's Creed Origins recently revealed a post-launch and season pass trailer showcasing all of the tasty extra content that you can look forward to spending your money on. That's spending your money on after you've spent full whack on the base game which isn't even out yet. It's on our YouTube trending tab here in the UK and it does seem very popular. Very few people are raising the point that some of this planned extra content could well be stuff that was removed or held back from the main game. So maybe this study is right, maybe you don't like full finished games, maybe you do like to buy your games in chunks long after they first come out. So let's get this clear straight away. The trailer that we're on about, the Assassin's Creed trailer, some of the stuff in that trailer is free content. Yeah. So it's not all stuff that they're saying, you know, buy now. But like we were just saying then, considering that they've already got enough to show in a trailer and some of it you can actually see it in action and the game's not out yet, you're kind of thinking like, They've sliced this off and they've portioned it out for later on. You know the score. But it turns out people like it. People prefer it. People want it more than just buying a game and that's it. Who knew? I think the people who really, really like games and who follow games a lot probably aren't the ones who are who are so keen on this, who are buying all the season pass stuff and, and DLC. Maybe it is people who are a bit more chilled out about gaming and will just buy the one game that they really enjoy and buy a season pass for it while they're at it. Why the hell not? It kind of reminds me of like going to the cinema. Like if you go to the cinema a lot, you'll never buy popcorn and a drink because it's a flipping ripoff. But a lot of people will go to the cinema and definitely buy a popcorn and a drink because they're at the cinema. Of course they're going to buy popcorn and a drink. They just think about it in a different way and they're just a bit more relaxed about the whole thing. And they're not thinking about the fact that they're getting ripped off. They just want the cinema experience of having a bit of popcorn and a drink. I think it's less, yeah, you know. it's a bit more of a luxury for them. Like people that might only buy Assassin's Creed once a year, yeah. they'll go all in. But if you're buying a game every week or whatever right, like that, yeah. then you're getting annoyed because for you, it's just literally a product that you are consuming and being charged extra for. So that it's not as much of a luxury. It's a lifestyle. I've already regretted saying that, but you know, <laughs> you, you know, you know what I'm saying, right? And we've seen this with our own eyes when we were yeah. at EGX, right? As much as everyone talks about, I'll never play a COD game, I'll never play Assassin's Creed, mm. Star Wars, they had the longest lines. And out of all those people yeah. there, I can't help but think how many of them would happily buy the season pass. All the people that are liking it on YouTube, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I think what those people as well, they're not watching YouTube videos like this. They're not watching their, their favorite people on YouTube uh, just talking about things like people like Total Biscuit and Jim Sterling who, who bemoan this kind of thing constantly. Yeah. They're not following that stuff, and so they, they just don't care. It is initially very surprising to me that, that season passes and DLC are really are popular with consumers. 
I, like, it's completely blew me away that. But then the more I kind of started thinking about it, it kind of does make sense. The key findings, if you will, are that the, the gaming industry as a whole are loving season passes and things like that. And it's tripled the industry's growth, or at least that's what gamesindustry.biz have found by reading this article. Yeah, so there you go. We were wrong. Season passes are fantastic. See you tomorrow. So what do you reckon, guys? Does it take you by surprise at all, or do you actually prefer buying all the extra stuff? Let us know down in the comments below. Remember to like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new around here. Hey, look, there's plenty more content right here on the screen if you fancy checking out some more of our stuff. And there's a link to our Patreon if you want to support the channel. Until then, we'll see you next time.